Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Date Your Wife podcast. My name is Garrett J. White, the founder of Wake Up Warrior and your co-host here at the Date Your Wife podcast. I am here with my uh, beautiful co-host. There she is on video. You can see her. Her name is Danielle K. White. She is the founder of BKW Styling and creator of Natural Beaded Rose. Thanks for introducing me. You're welcome. Talking to that microphone. Welcome to my show. Welcome to your show. I'm simply your arm candy and your bag. I'm your handbag. I'm a good looking handbag. Sure. Sure? I was like thinking if you were handbag, what handbag would you be? What handbag would I be? For Ooh. sure, Hermes. Really? Yeah, that's 40000 right? Isn't um, that what it is? probably the highest $40,000 Hermes bag? Yeah. That is me. Really? Yep, that is me, <laughs> just so you know. All right, my friends, well, we're here for the very- Well, if that's you, I don't have one in my closet yet, so- No, well, you oh, don't need one in your closet because you got one you in your bed. You might just be Chanel. You got one in your bed. We're don't need one in your working closet. Working towards Hermes? <laughs> nope, already have it. In your bed, good, to, good times, ready to go. All, All right. right, gentlemen, ladies, here is the deal. We are currently sitting- Inside of a podcast is allowing us to discuss the following, which is the ideas of being married while living the warrior's way, which you can learn more about the warrior's way if you're a man and or a woman by heading to warriorbook.com and join over 20,000 men and families who have invested in the warrior book and have begun the journey of learning the warrior's way to having it all across body, being, balance, and business. So this conversation here in this particular podcast is about us taking a little journey down for topics. Memory lane. Memorily, me me memorily, memorily, memorily lane. Memorily lane. On memorily lane. Yes. Topic number one in the first week is your favorite topic is what? QQP. QQP. No. What does it's this your mean? your favorite topic. It is my favorite topic. Um, it have, is yours we too. We have four topics. What's the first topic? The first one is how to... <laughs> Have sex. <laughs> how to have sex. How to have sex. It's a how right. to guide to have it's sex. It's a how to guide to no. having sex. Okay, cool. So first week is prayer is sex. What's the second week? Um do, do, do. kids. Parenting. Communication. <clears throat> money. Yes, money, 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 money. money. Third week There's, is and the drum roll. Kids. Parenting. Kids and parenting. And the fourth week, which would bring us into today's topic and Danielle for the quadruple crown. The answer is sex. I like where you're going <laughs> with this, and I'm happy to take it to sex. But unfortunately, I know. We're, today is that a topic two. of communication. communication. Okay, so let's get started because communication, I feel like I am actually somewhat of a shy person, I guess you could say, mm -hmm. or just more introverted. I actually don't think I'm shy. I'm just kind of introverted. Mm -hmm. But it's funny because the first thing I saw in Garrett Yes. He was way over outspoken. And at first, I got to tell the story. Way over outspoken. I got to just tell the story All right, really tell quick Let's because go. we're on the topic of Let's communication. Let's go. Okay, so, because I'm an air mace bag. Continue. Okay. Wow. Okay. This this <laughs> won't be in the air mace category well, then, All right. but working towards it. Okay, good. So Give it to us. I met Garrett when I was 18. 18 years yeah, old. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I we were in college. Mm -hmm. And... I remember we met him. I met him at the first like event of the year for UVU, which is the college I was going to. He was with some of his friends. I was with some of mine. And literally, the first thing I couldn't see him. I just like you couldn't see me. He's a tall guy, so mm -hmm. I saw like he had, I had huge white hair. He had this bleached out, crazy like hair, and he was so loud. And I was like, very loud. We were walking out of the event, and I was like what what is what is going on why is this guy so loud mm -hmm. what in the world and then we're walking out to the car and i'm like oh my god that group of guys with the loud guy is following us and my friends were into it and i was just like hurry get in the car go 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 and they were like no they were all into it yes they were totally into i know it. <laughs> and so, they were loving the insanity so it's funny because then we anyway some of my friends started talking to actually garrett i mm -hmm. was in the car I were you already, really in the car I that was, day? I don't know. You ditched into the vehicle. I literally, but maybe that's what you were like, oh, who's that girl? Like, I, I think, remember talking I think to I've your friend been, Shelly. I've always been the more mysterious one. You were a little mysterious. I, Does that I mean think, you were just a little more like um, um, self-conscious? No, no, not self-conscious. A like, little less have social? This, I have this attitude of like, I don't really give a shit. Let's get on the road. Is that really what it was when it, you were 18? 100%. I don't it's give always, a shit. Let's get on the road. It's always been my attitude. And all your girlfriends were sitting outside the car. But I have to like go out like go out of my... I don't give a shit attitude and mm -hmm. actually be social. Okay. Because then I feel like I, I, yeah, I just, it's like something I just 
have to do. So anyway, story goes where he's talking to my roommates anyways, like, and that was the first thing that I was attracted to in Garrett later when I met it, when I met him outside of that moment was he was like very outgoing. And I remember the first time he picked me up and like, it was weird. You asked me out for ice cream and I was like, weird because we didn't drink coffee. And I'm like, it's ice cream like coffee. And but I'm do like, you remember the first time we came to your apartment? Well, no, no, no. Yes. But that let was me before finish my story. ice cream. So you came in and this was like on our first ice cream date. I'll but this it. before the ice cream date came the meeting at the apartment. No, no, no. Let, I'll go back to that. So, all right. Because I have to, I, my point being on communication, all right. I, I remember I was like, God, he's really loud. Like, what's going on? But um, when we went on our first ice cream date, I'm like, hey, how are you? And you were like, hey, and you're like, do you want to invite me in? I was like, I guess. And you came in and we were like sitting there and you were just talking. And, and then I was like, oh, he's cool. He's actually like super chill. Um, and so, and then I saw like both sides of you. I saw a side that was like super chill and we always had really good conversation. Mm-hmm. But then I also saw the side of you that like loves to be in the spotlight and me and me. And I'm like, I think mm-hmm. part of me was like attracted and annoyed at the same time. Yes. And then with me, it was always like, I was kind of like, quiet but mysterious which that was kind of annoying and attractive to you and so it's interesting because the two areas in communication which i think we love and loathe does that make sense that's like that that's the point that i was trying to make and that's how it's been with both of us from the beginning is like this this like attraction yet like mm, like kind of annoyed but i think i've heard i've heard that you've heard that you what you see in someone else is what what you wish you had in you so i'm like maybe i wish i was more outgoing and more Woo, I don't know. Maybe I wish I was more uh, quiet and not giving a fuck. Yeah. It's probably possible. Yep. Actually, I'm sure it is possible. And between the two of us, it makes a damn good couple. Wow, of- back to back. I mean, it just <laughs> leads to not only great sex, but also to a great it's relationship week, it's not that week. of battling. In good battle, though. Uh, so- but I always feel like our communication was decent, except for the fact that we did fight a lot for a bit. We broke up like nine <laughs> times in two years. We also we also fought a lot. <laughs> we fought like, a lot when we were dating. Fought a lot marriage. when we were married. Yeah. We had, so we had two years of dating fighting, and then we had ten years of marriage fighting. Not ten. Ten. Really? Ten years of marriage fighting. I think five. We've been married fifteen years coming this summer. I know. It is this summer it's already. Best fifteen years of my life. Best fifteen years of my life too. Aww. Oh. Oh. Isn't bloody. it interesting? Like fifteen <laughs> years is almost half your life. Um, yeah, it that is. means half of your life you have been with me. Seventeen years of your life you have been with like me I in your world. You. I feel like you just met. You. you feel like you just met me? No. Are you saying that for real? Or you mean that for real or no? No, you're always a good surprise. Always a good surprise. You gotta keep a girl on her toes, or she'll just get bored. All right. Do same I keep you on your toes? I think the same. I think it actually goes in both situations. I think, um, like if you're bored or you're safe, that's not necessarily a great place to be in in marriage either. Like I feel like there's a lot of couples that just like truck along, but. I don't know. I don't know if that's a great place to be in either. I feel like you're just in uh, maintenance mode. And I always say if you're if you're stagnant, you're digressing. And I believe that goes in relationships as well. So I'm going to ask you an interesting question. Are you ready? Sure. If we'd had sex the first night we met, do you think we would have gotten married? Yeah. You do? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it depends. I think, I think that they're... Because we did not have sex the first night well, we got no. married. We did not even have sex before we got married. No. Two years we were together. We did not even kiss for the first but two I months. Think, I think you there, kissed me. There was all you always. You did. Let's tell it how it is. You came after me. You said this guy. You know what? You you no played longer... the I don't give a fuck game. That's right. That's the title of our show. How I to don't play give the, a fuck. I don't give a fuck game. That's the communication so, strategy. I don't give a fuck. That is our communication but, strategy. So this is for how if we're talking about our first kiss. <laughs> Yeah, let's we, talk about it because we you were, went in for the kill. Well, oh my God! I'm I mean, like, some people go in for the sexual for ice kill. Cream Seventeen times. Seventeen times Jesus we went for ice cream, and then you decided and finally you couldn't handle it anymore. No, I just remember like we were like kind of snuggling, hanging out. We like, were laying in my bed. We were laying in your bed, and I was like, and then you kept this, creeping this closer, and then we were massages like two hours in. What else is next? Yes, <laughs> yes. And then, and I was like, I got to be classy. I can't, I can't go in for the kill. So I just remember you did go in for the kill. No, I no. You I, went in for it. I you rem- kissed me. I remember you you like lined your face. I was right next this, to you. This was you. If you guys are not watching this, you can go to my blog dkwsign.com, <laughs> or you can also go to dateyourwifenow.com. But we're laying in bed, and his, yes. his lips on my lip like this, like this. Like, like what? Did you like, just lick the microphone? No, like you were just like rubbing your. That looked I was really dirty. Your, Don't go to those I websites. I, <laughs> I, 
I love what you're doing there on that microphone. <laughs> no, That's quite the I move. just remember your lips were like nuzzling on mine. They were. We were but nuzzling I like, lips. I don't know what this is, but I should probably go in at this point because his lips. Okay, are so glitter. wait a second. You have just acknowledged that your, you went in. Your lips touched you did my it. lips first. No. Yes, they we did. We brushed. Um, you were just we like, brushed. I was like, is this a dead fish kiss? This is weird. <laughs> like, let's get going with this. Like, pick up some moves. Yes, and you did. You landed yeah. one on me. Do you know the thing is interesting about that is that I actually had to give away my cell phone, and my roommates would hold me in check because I had a pattern of uh, burning out relationships with girls very quickly, like two weeks, and be done. And I, I was like, I, I really atti- liked you. I had that attitude of like, I really liked you. We could date if we don't. That's cool too. I know. And I was like, hey, you know, we but could I kiss really if we want you to. Too, but I, I just really wanted had to kiss that you. Attitude. I really want to have sex with you. Well. Then I did. You still always want to have I sex. I still want to have sex with you all the time. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Well, at least nothing has changed in, in 17 years. All right, so we have this communication strategy thing. We're going to talk about a specific angle on this. Are you ready to do this? Sure. Okay, so there's a book I'm going to recommend. Are you ready for a book recommendation, Mrs. No. White? No? Do you read? Um, is it in iTunes on Speed Read? Yes, you can listen to it on audiobook. Okay, then yes. Speed Read. I okay. Speed Read Listen. All right, so here is the book. The book is a book by the name of Crucial Conversations. Oh, I haven't read that one. No, you have not. This book was a book that we actually studied back in my original companies almost uh, 15 years ago when I first launched one of my mortgage companies. And we got this book, Crucial Conversations. We hired a consultant from the firm to come in and work with me and my teams and all of my employees in helping us deal with conversation because I was not very good. I was very good at talking, but I was not very good when tension was high in a conversation. I would blow up or I would shut up, meaning I would run away or I would destroy everyone. That just described the first like 10 years. 10 years, (laughs) yes. So obviously the book didn't do me any good because I was studying at the beginning of our relationship. Weird. So communication changed though over the years, but you had a natural tendency to do one of the things that communicate or or, uh, um, uh, shit. Well, as I was saying, crucial conversations. One of the things that crucial conversation teaches, well, there's a lot of things, but one of the aspects is this triangle of thought process. Hmm. So we're going to talk about this triangle because you naturally do the triangle. I had to learn and be trained on the triangle. And the triangle is actually the favorite sex move of one of our friends. How did this go into sex? Because it always does. This is literally... Do you know a game that we play at Warrior? Is this normal for guys? Or yes. are you just more vocal about it? I'm very vocal about it, but guys are actually like this. The more they're around me and other guys like me, they give themselves permission to talk about it. Do you know we play a game at our Warrior events Maybe. called what Paid if they and give, Laid? What if they gave you permission to like not give a fuck mode? Like, What if they gave you permission to hold back a little? Like that first kiss. I'm just putting it out there. I am holding back. Do you see me touching you? No. Well, I'm that simply might touching be weird. you with my words. That might be weird. Simply touching podcast. with my words. <laughs> so, okay, anyways, so paid and laid is a game that we play. Mm. And one of the things we create is we talk about our favorite sexual position. And in that, ew, we name it. Ew, you share that? We name the sexual position. Keep it classy. It is classy. Tell me more about the triangle. All right. So exactly. This is why I'm telling you because the triangle is the favorite sex move and the name of one of our friends. I'm not going to tell you who it is. I'm gonna I keep know it. Who I'm it gonna is. keep it classy. You don't even know who it is. I, oh, if Do you know who it is? If it's about sex and one of our friends, yes. there's only one friend. The person friend. that you thought about, exactly that is who it is. The, exactly. <laughs> there's one friend that I'm like. We are not talking stop about them on this your show. Sexual yep, positions. But we're not talking about on this show. We're just simply gonna say their favorite sexual move has a name, and the name is triangle. All right. So now, not to be confused with the favorite sex move of our friends, some of our best friends, called the triangle. We are going to discuss the triangle, which is a natural thing that Danielle does when it comes to putting herself in another person's shoes. So, Danielle, before I introduce the triangle, we're going to talk about the natural mode, modus operandi, which is the words they use fancy talk for how somebody naturally shows up. Okay. Okay, you can't sit a foot away from the microphone. You're going to have to sit. I'm playing it cool. You're playing it cool or, okay, (laughs) sit forward and play it less cool. Here's the deal. You naturally have the ability to put yourself in another person's shoes, meaning when battle, when tensions are high, when there's a lot on the line, when shit is spicy, you seem to have an ability to put yourself in another person's shoes and you diffuse the situation and you did this for a decade or longer before I was able to do this. Talk about this whole ability that you have to put yourself in another person's shoes this is all going to wrap around i promise so what do you got here um i think that i find myself getting emotionally riled up and i don't like being in that space and so then i turn to okay now 
if like I try to take some accountability in the situation I'm like if I was this person could I understand why they were feeling this way and I literally try to like envision that and then I'm like it helps me calm down and then I'm like okay that makes sense I may not agree with it but it makes me understand why they are reacting the way they are that's triggering me so you would do this with me then I do this with everybody but I just naturally do it I Mm -hmm. naturally like flip things like even Garrett will be like you'll be mad about something situation Mm -hmm. I'm like well maybe you were doing this and this and this and I automatically put myself which that gets me in trouble too pisses me off and I'll be like well maybe they and then but and I so sometimes I have to tell myself like just listen right I'm just here to listen yeah, you're here to listen because sometimes using that mode, you would actually say, no matter what was going on for me, you would take the other side. Yeah, and I wasn't meaning to do that. I was right. trying to understand the story from both perspectives. Right. Okay, so you have this natural ability then to go into where you are, but you also have an ability to go into where the other person is in the conversation. Sure. You put yourself in that space and it does what to the energy? So if you're angry or the other person it you're talking to is angry, what does it do? It and helps me think clearer. Okay, so it gives you some clarity on thought. Yeah. All right, are you able to and do this? And it makes me, like I just said, the biggest thing is I'm like, I may not agree, mm-hmm. but I can understand the place they're coming from. And okay. it just, it, it's not even about right and wrong. It's just about like, this is why it collided and this is why it happened and it is what it is. And it's just like, it's like poof, into thin air. Poof, into thin air you go. Yes, and I'm like, poof. Poof, bye-bye. Yeah. Okay, so I was not naturally good at this at all. Like zero... So it was pretty much my way or the highway. And so we got in battles all the time. One of the things that would happen is I would come to fight with Danielle because it was my way or the highway. And Danielle would put herself into the, you know, other person's chair. And I would come at her ready to fight, but she did something that was really fucking tricky. <laughs> I reframe? Do you remember what this trickiness I don't know. was? Magical I will me. tell you. What is this? That the magical trick, she would show me her breasts. I, that is not the magic. All right. Okay. I so do that I now, will. But... And now she does that to distract the conversation. But yeah. back in the day, that was not what she did. Here's what she would do. Ready? She would not fight with me. I feel like a lot of women probably do that, though. No, but it was different, though, because you would just vocalize it and you would look at me and say, listen, I'm not going to fight with you about this right now. And you would not give any energy to my anger. How did you do this? Um, I, I think I've talked about this on some other other podcasts, but everybody has this like um, emotional state where they flip their lid, and some people flip their lid quicker. It could be like one, two, three, bam. Mine could yeah. be like one, two, three, four, five, seven, nine, ten, bam. So I have like seventeen more levels. To, the math was wrong there, obviously. That's a lot of levels. I, Continue, but, but don't anyways, worry. Everybody's averaging. I have averaging. more You're levels good. before I, my lids flipped, and so I would be in a logical space, and I'd see that Garrett was e- irrational, illogical. And I, for me, I'd have to be like, I'm not going to fight with you because what happens if I fight with him, then I hit a level, then I hit a level, and then I hit a level, and then I hit a level, and then we both have flipped our lids, and then it's like war time. So if I can catch it before I get to that space of getting pissed off, and I'm like, I'm not going to fight with you because in fighting, I flip my lid, I'm like, I'm going to like peace out because I know when we both have gone crazy, like then it's really emotional and you can't really unsay things that you said when you're in that space. And there's always truth to that fucking madness. There is. And so there's, I'm like, is that good or bad? But it's like, it's, it leads to more bad than it does good in my experience. Okay. So you would diffuse the situation by not actually engaging. You would engage, but you wouldn't give it energy. So I'm going to spin this to this model that is taught in the book, Crucial Conversations. Great book, wonderful book. We've studied this hundreds of times over the last 15 years. I've used it in and out of all my companies, but also have used it in a way to be able to support how I deal with an engaging conversation. It was what Danielle naturally did. So here is here is the space, right? The first premise is in a communication or in a conversation, you need to create space. The only way to create space is to be able to put yourself in what Danielle naturally does, which is to put yourself in the position of the other other person in the conversation. But Crucial Conversations lays this down and gives you three key points. The first point is to get clear about what I want for myself in the conversation, right? So in the situation of Danielle and I are fighting, asking myself a question, what do I actually want? In the past, what I wanted was... You just wanted to fight. But I did. that's not what I wanted. What I actually wanted was to have sex, to communicate, to be connected, to feel wanted, all these other things. But I would lose sense of what I wanted in order to be right. Right. So I would want to be right instead of getting what I want. I think I had to kind of come to that agreement too with like with things I'm like why am I so because I tend to be stubborn even though that I can like flip and put myself on a different perspective there's times when I'm like you motherfucker you're wrong 
And that's when I'm <laughs> like stubborn Taurus Danielle comes out and I'm like, I will mow you over before I admit <laughs> that I'm wrong. So watch out. And the crazy person, I have to be like, Danielle, you're not going to like get what you want. And so that allows me to dial it back in because I realize that's actually not getting what I want. And what I want is more important than being right. Mm, so. Did you just hear that? Yeah. Getting what I want is more important than being right. Well, this, this was not something clearly evident to me. Um, although it might be something that clearly evident to you was not clearly evident to me. And so I found myself constantly in a fucking situation where I would fight to be right instead of get what I want. So crucial conversation says, listen, anytime that you're going to enter into a conversation that is crucial and they define a crucial conversation as anything where their tensions are high, where, where emotions are high, where, where um, attention is high, emotions are high, and also there is something significant in the conversation, meaning the outcome is significant. There's something that's coming up, right? So you're in marriage, you're having a conversation, bam, off you go. For 10 years, I would just want to be right. I would fight to be right over getting what I wanted. Part of this was I didn't even know what I wanted. So the first step in this is getting clear about what you want. The second step, and this was life altering, right? Was to ask yourself, what do you want for the other person? Hmm. This changed me because I started asking myself a question in situations with you and I, where I would flip it and I would say, okay, what do I want? And I would get clear. And then I would say, well, what does Danielle want? And on the topic, I know I bring it up about sex, but I'm gonna bring it up again. On the topic of sex, what I wanted was to be sexually connected and wanted, right? Then I stepped back and I said, what does Danielle want? Danielle wants me to plan shit. She wants me to show up and be on time. She wants me to be and invest the time and energy in her and to show that I give a shit about life with us as a couple and spending time with her. So before I was like, what do I want? I want to have sex. And then I'll be like, well, what the fuck, Danielle? What's wrong with you? Why are we not having sex? I think because guys think like, I'm providing. I'm busy. Yes. But women are like, well, that's great. I want you to provide. And I actually want you to want to genuinely want to spend time with me. Well, that's a so, lot of wants. So guys want you to genuinely want to connect and want to mm. want to have sex. Want to want to? Yeah, want and to want to have sex. women want you to actually want to hang out with them and then, and cuddle and on the couch. And without do what? nothing. Without any without any pressure, to, pressure have. to have sex like exactly. we want you to actually want to spend time with me this was quite a dilemma oh. because i was like man i i know what i want i want to have sex i want to be connected and I'm, I'm like, like what does Danielle want? You're not getting laid if I don't get quality time and if exactly. that quality time comes with a, an expectation you can fuck right off that is a hard one that is a hard one it is a hard one i bet one. that happens a lot with couples it happens a ton Guys but will it's end something, up it's not like we trying figured, to put in the time because they want to get laid. Well, it's not like we figure out the magical solution. I think we both realize that to get the results that we want, we know how to like create that for ourselves. Yes. Instead of, like you said, just engaging in like fighting and and always having this battle that wasn't getting us anywhere. It was like an element of surrender on both sides. But really, it was just a matter of like flipping it like, OK, put myself in his shoes, which I naturally do. But I would have a hard time doing it with you because you would come at me with swords and knives blazing. Yes. Well, there was interesting. It was uh, like inside of that, it was not holding in crucial conversations, calls us again, um, a safe space, right? So there's a safe space for dialogue, which is this place where you hold the space open so that people can talk. I couldn't do that. I didn't hold the space open at all, particularly with Danielle, particularly when it was, I was feeling triggered sexually at all, where like I felt like I wasn't getting laid or there was like no connection or what was happening. I would become this crazy person that was not only clear, I would get clear about what I wanted, but I had no concern about what she wanted. So this opened it up, right? You ready for the third piece in the triangle? Mm -hmm. It's very intense. Oh wait, wait, hold on, break down the triangle. I'm I am, so I'm, lost. So. No, I'm coming to the th okay. I'm coming to the third piece okay. of the triangle. Let's hear it. I'm just asking, are you ready for the third piece of the triangle? I think right so. now we have a straight line. We don't have okay. a triangle. We're about to Let's make a triangle. All right. So the first thing that we're looking at is what do I want? The second <laughs> thing we're looking at is what do I want for my partner? In this case, Danielle. And the third piece is what do I want for us as a couple? Hmm. There's, hmm. there's, there's three and I. There is three <laughs> triangles. Three angles to the triangle. One, what do I want? Two, what do I want for my wife? Three, what do I want for me and my wife as a couple? What are you hearing from this, Danielle? What are you seeing her here? Yeah. Okay, that's it? Just I like it? Um, I've never really thought of it like what do I what do I want for us as a couple? I think it. I've always thought of it like, well, maybe I did. I was like, okay, my needs are met, his needs are met. Both needs are met. I don't know. I don't know what what is it. What? Give me an example of what you mean by what do I want for us as a couple? All right, I'll play through. You ready? Okay. All right. So we get into a situation of tension. I say to myself, "What do I want?" I say, "I want to be wanted." 
I want to have sex. I want to be connected. I want to be wanted by my wife. Then I say, okay, well, what does Danielle want? Meaning, what do I want for Danielle? Well, I want Danielle to feel wanted also. And I want her to feel connected. How does she feel wanted? She feels wanted when I take her nice places. If she feels wanted when we, we spend time together, she feels wanted when I clean up some kitchen stuff. She feels wanted. And there was all these things that I was like, what the fuck? I don't I want you to want to do the dishes. I know. And I wanted you to want to have sex. So like <laughs> there was this weird want to want to thing going on. But the minute I started asking that second question, I'm like, well, what do I want for Danielle? And I realized I wanted the same thing for Danielle that I wanted. It wasn't necessarily sex. It was I want her to feel wanted. Then I came back to us as a couple and I said, okay, well, what do I want for us as a couple? It was really simple. I want us to feel like we can honestly communicate and we both are getting what we want. So would you like to hear what this did for me and why this helped you? Sure. So you wanted us to both to make as a couple to make sure we both got what we wanted. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I, um, I find myself then with this thought process on uh, not being as aggressive as sexually and as vocal. I would do this weird pouty thing and then I would do this weird kind of like not going to get me what I want thing, kind of almost jabs. And then um, I stopped backing off on that. I just stopped doing it. And I started getting to a place where I was like, <clears throat> I want Danielle to feel wanted. And part of the way she feels wanted is I've got a seducer. I can't touch her all the time. I just got to be in this place. And it became more and more natural for me to help you get what you wanted, knowing think, that getting what you wanted, I would get what I want. I think in that space, it, like you, it, it was interesting because you'd want to come spend time with me, which mm -hmm. would be like my love language or whatever. But at the same time, I remember you were very, I don't know how to say this, but just very gropey, which yep. made me feel like, dude, like back it down, but like literally. And, and I noticed this, this is like a guy thing. Guys with hand just wants to be glued right to the ass. It's like they can't right help it. Right to the it's ass. And it's not just Garrett. I see it all the time. Like you used to think it was just I me. Know. You I thought I was an idiot. I think you're pretty vocal about it, but I see it in a lot of men where literally, I don't know what it is. It's like they own the left cheek of their wife's. And I will tell you right now, that is so fucking annoying. Like, if, you ha if you're working a ton and you're spending time with your wife, refrain your fucking hands, okay? I'm just going to say it. Like, And I, that probably, like, triggers you because you're like, I just want to have sex with you. But from a girl's perspective, like, it's almost, I always think about it, like, when you're dating. Like, if you're dating somebody and it's the, at the beginning stages, like, I just feel like you're not, like, you're my piece of property. Like, that's what it says to a girl. And so that would trigger me. And then, like, even the time was kind of, like, oh my god I want to spend time with you but literally you're all over me and so it's like playing this not a game but it's like it's a game it's, it is but it's not it's like meeting it's like giving that that um, what did you call it the space the it's creating a safe cre space creating a safe space and that's mm -hmm. what it is and so by kind of like not being standoffish or pouty like you said because I'd be like oh my god like I'd be kind of triggered and annoyed but then it would turn into like you being shut shut down and yep. I wasn't trying to shut you down I just needed a safe space so that I could like enjoy time and warm up and then it but and then it seemed like the night always would end better you know and by in better that means sex well and usually a good sex it's not just good like sex not just it's not just like vaginal masturbation well, it's not just like jesus christ he needs to get laid i mean obviously his hands been all on my left ass cheek as his the whole night so like let's let's just like let's just do this and be done and i think that happens a lot for women and so it's like to to, to want your wife to want to want you you have to kind of play the game of like giving her a, a comfortable safe space so as we wrap up today's show here is here's a piece i want you to consider guys i'm gonna let daniel give her two th two cents you're gonna ask yourself these three questions again not created by me but by crucial conversations what do i want for myself in this situation number two what do i want for my wife in this situation and number three what do i want for us as a couple in this situation so when tension's high and shit's on the line you're gonna ask yourself these three questions. You're gonna put yourself in three different spots. In the spot of what do I want for me? In the spot of what do I want for this woman that I love that is a mother of my children? What do I want for us as a couple now and for the future? And as I answered these questions, it would give me clear actions and clear distinctions because it would force me to not be right. It would force me to let go of things because holding on to certain things, stories, being right, situations, it didn't give me what I wanted. It would actually give me the opposite of what I wanted. But again, I spent most of the first 10 years of our marriage wanting to be right about shit. And in being right, I would get nothing that I wanted. So there's my, my challenge. Okay. Do you have any thoughts on this to wrap up the show? Um, no, I think it logically plays out quite a bit of our marriage. And <laughs> it makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think 
I think it takes like two people to kind of come to that realization too. And two I, to tango. Yeah, and I always feel like there's two sides of the story, and I feel like we were both. Kind of like we would dial it back in and try to take accountability in our own relationship, even though we would fight a bit and like it was crazy for a bit. There was something where we'd always we valued growth and we wanted to stay together. We were not going to just call it quits. And so we kind of went into it with that mind frame of like, okay, well, it can't always be the other person. And it kind of takes you a minute to like look at yourself and like, how could I show up differently? What could I do? And in the same space of where Garrett was like, you know, not not maybe being overly touchy or not being in the pouty mode. Sometimes it was me being more flirty and me being more the like engager, uh, you know, with conversation or even sex. And I think both of us kind of got to this space where we saw what in order to get what we wanted, we kind of had to cross the line a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then it and it just kind of creating and keeping that balance in your relationship is is key. And I can tell when we've emotionally shifted, I'm like, all right, we just maybe we need time and sex right now. Like, <laughs> and that's why we do date nights a lot. That's why we do this podcast because it's times for us to have communication through such busy lives that we have with kids and both being entrepreneurs and running our own businesses. It gives us this time to to really work through our stuff with you guys mm -hmm. and and have those cru crucial conversations. So that's basically what this podcast is. Crucial. It's one giant crucial conversation crucial every conversations week. Conversations by Danielle and Garrett White. Danielle and Garrett White. All right, so, so that gives us. Hopefully, you guys are finding some value in this. And there's, I think, I think this is something that like a lot of couples like they know, but to actually hear another couple that mm -hmm. is like, oh, I went through some crazy shit, and here's what I found, and they're like, oh, okay, that makes sense. We should apply this in our relationship, or we should try that, or like, or whatever it is. Every time we do this show, we try to be real but also kind of create some value for you guys based on what we're going through and like i said we're always value we value growth and so we're always trying to figure out life um together and and just living our best lives so your final challenge here inside of this week's show is this to sit down in a situation that might be a little emotionally triggering for you for the guys and for the girls and ask yourself the trifecta questions what do I want for myself in this situation? What do I want for my partner, my spouse in this situation? What do I want for us as a couple in this situation? What I think you're going to find is when you get clear about what you want for yourself, what you want for her or him, and what you want for yourselves as a couple, there's a lot of shit that you are doing that will not get you there. And just makes it easy. Makes it easy to shift gears and to say, I'm not going to do this anymore. I am not going to do this anymore. And I'm not going to do this anymore. And I am going to do this and this and this. Because those are the things that will get me what I want. They're not necessarily the things that are right. They're not the things that are wrong. They're not the things that are going to make me right in the face of other people. Because 99% of the time, the first 10 years we were married, I was committed to being right, not committed to getting what I want. I think I always felt like I was right, but because I didn't want to argue, I was just like... I don't care. That's not going to give me what I want. So peace out. So I wouldn't talk to you. And, and then I would get like, pissed and I'm I would not to say that anymore. I was right, but everybody thinks they're right in whatever their argument is. Otherwise, right. there's, otherwise there would be no argument. Right. So everybody stands in this place of like, I'm right, asshole. <laughs> and so if you can kind of like dial it back in and then uh, literally like cool, cool, cool down, like don't let your lid flip and then come back and revisit the conversation, having put yourself in the other person's shoes, then you can have a more logical, effective conversation. So you got your challenge for the week, ladies and gentlemen. Have a wonderful week again. This show brought to you by Warrior Book, found at warriorbook.com and the King's Kit with the King's Kit 30-Day Challenge. I encourage you to head on over there. Also, for those that are in the hair industry, head on over to hairextensionsecret.com and or bigmoneystylist.com. No. no. DKW Danielle Styling. always wants you to go to her blog. Because DKW it has everything Styling. there. It's com. like the hub of everything. It's like the hub. It's the hub. It's the hub. Fine. DKWstyling.com and warriorbook.com. Thanks so much for being here. We'll be here next week to have a conversation in our next show about sexuality. We'll be in Cabo, Cancun. Somewhere. We will be in Cabo when this show. Nope. When this show goes live, we'll be good. And then we get back from Cabo oh, and then sweet. we do the show. All right. Peace. All right. We'll see you guys next week.